Okay, on your downstairs system, you got a leak on this part right here. Alright, doing some residential today. I've already diagnosed this, so I gotta remove this suction dryer from this downstairs system and recharge it with R22. And then I'll re-insulate it. You can see the oil right there. And then for the upstairs system, I just gotta top that one off and replace the uh, service cap. So get started. Alright, so I'm gonna begin with charging this system up here. So we're gonna go off the sub cool. This is a R410A system holds 84 ounces and I've already determined it to be about 25% low so I'm going to add about a pound to it and this is going to be how I measure my liquid line I know I should have better tools but it's better than just putting the refrigerant in and not measuring it all it's also better to insulate the probe that way you get a better more accurate reading on the line this line's pretty warm so, I think we pull up a PT chart. So, just uh, Google R410 a PT chart. Then, so we'll pull up. So, we're looking at a temperature of 108 degrees. So, close, pretty close. We're going to have it uh, right around about 350, probably. 350 degrees. I mean, 300, yeah, 350 psi for a line is about 108 degrees. So, so with a PT chart, our line, if I had the uh, gauge on here, this pressure would get us right at uh, about 113 psi. So it's subcooling right now at about, I'd say, four or five degrees. Here we go. This is much better. The orange dial there, that's the 410A PT chart conversion. Okay, got it hooked up, and so I was a little wrong, a little more like around 111. So, this liquid line, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start adding to it the temperature and the pressure is gonna go up, and then once the temperature starts to come down, start to back, come back down at that point, will be getting to sub pool and we'll have a full line of liquid, full column of liquid. So to add our 410A refrigerant, you must flip the bottle upside down and always get the air out of the line. Okay, so here we go. Like I said, I suspect that the liquid line temperature and pressure will both start to go up when I first start adding and if they both go up that means that we don't have a full column of liquid in the condenser and that we are getting close to being full of a full column of liquid in the condenser and then once it's full it starts to stack up in the condenser and the temperature starts to go down so I just added a few more ounces maybe six ounces I'm gonna let this uh, stabilize while I start pumping this down. So you got your pump down valves right here. You pump the unit down. You see this is R22, this is old school. Pump the unit down by remove these caps, then you close this line. Quick glimpse back at over here, see that we are trying we are starting to get more saturated liquid mixture of uh, liquid and vapor in that liquid line so temperature's going up we're going to keep adding until the temperature starts to go back down all right and then back over here once you got the caps off you close off the uh, smaller one which is the liquid this one is pretty much always going to be a 316 allen wrench and they make a special tool for these two right here i've had many of them over the years but i don't have one today so a few minutes later, we're back over here at uh, almost at 112. So we're still filling with liquid. We'll add a little more. 
probably I'd say like another six to eight ounces in this little run right here. We'll keep an eye on this, see if it starts going up and then coming back down. Over here, this is closed. Gonna begin to pump down with the liquid line closed and gauges on it. Start it up and we watch. Gonna watch until both of them really, but the suction side, once it gets to zero, we'll shut it off. Pumping down pretty quick. That is all right. Okay, that's good enough for me. Now, once it is pumped down, the compressor should be able to hold it, but we're gonna close off the other line and relieve pressure from the line set, and then we'll be ready to cut this out. Don't ever cut it out under pressure. If you do, you will have an experience, and after that experience, you'll never do that again. Right then, now back over here, we're at 112.6. I can see that it is cooling better. It's starting to remove more moisture out of the house. 112.6 there, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pump a little more in it. Alright, that's about another six to eight ounces. Here in a minute this will start dripping like a steady stream watch. Okay, now over here we've got this pump down. It's gonna relieve the pressure and then start prepping this to pull out to remove. So this is called a valve stem remover and it will pull out the valve. It works when it's under pressure or relieved. It's a really good tool to have. Alright. The valve stem is out, the line is depressurized, over here we're at 113.7, go up a little more, like I said, I want that number to start coming back down, looks like it might, so, and once it's cooling better, you'll see that this is going to be draining faster, alright, then once you're ready to cut into the line, you're going to take Whatever you're using to repair your pads, which I'm using this, you're gonna mark exactly where you're gonna be cutting the copper at. So in my case, I want to have, got an X right there. I'm gonna cut right around the circle at that X because I wanna have about an inch of copper on both sides to be able to stick inside of this pipe so it makes a good seal. And back over here again, we're up around 425. Here we're liquid at 113 looks like it might be at that point of uh, full liquid I'm gonna add a little more see if it comes down some more I'm gonna have to wash these condensers too because they're just they're too dirty you see it's gonna run too hot I prefer them to be a little cooler than that all right added some more we'll come back to that in a minute all right so the easiest thing to do here is sand sand it as much as you can this way because my pipes don't actually come up to like here so I want all this metal right here to be clean so that there's nothing dirty on my welding same over here this is where I'm going to be cutting so I want all this right here to be clean
Okay, I like that. Okay, and here we are back again, and it is going down now. So, we are now got a full liquid, a full column of liquid in the liquid line. We are sub cooling at around nine degrees, and our suction line is nice and cold. All right, I had to switch phones because the other one said it's overheating. It's hot out here. Okay, so now, good and clean, good and clean over here. We're down to 114, so we're down from 113 to 114.5. So we're sub cooling now, according to this, around nine degrees. And our liquid line is nice and cold. So, bump it a little bit more. And that's probably gonna do it. fit it on there and that is how I like it that is gonna work okay now the fun part my favorite part teach you how to solder in a video this quick. So I ended up getting uh, one of them done and the other one I ran out of acetylene. So changing the bottle. Okay back at it again. Finish up this one down there.
right, looking good to me. So, here's a little bit of a close up view on it. This one, I'm gonna go all the way around it, always, and never miss any spots. Ah, my camera won't zoom. All right, next I'm gonna clean up my work area and uh, I'm gonna prepare to, to wash these units because they are, they're dirty, you see all that? And then washing it's gonna bring this pressure over here down to like under 400, so it's gonna make a difference on how it's running electrically, less electricity it's gonna use and just run more efficiently. So then, before I wash it, I want to pressure test and leak check my new piece I put in but first I'm gonna put in the valve stem you gotta let it cool down don't put it in there when it's when it's too hot now okay. Let's see there we go and that's in okay so got the gauges on here in order to pressure test the line so what I do is I'll crack this valve open just a minute and that will allow the line set to get some pressure we'll plug in it there we go pressure okay mm. so this is my weld right here. Solder joint, braze, whatever you want to call it. Looks to me like it's holding there. Over here. Looks to me like, like it too is holding. Alright, so after leak checked in, I'll charge it up. Here I have the good stuff, the expensive stuff. The stuff that's been phased out. So this one, I believe when I was looking, it's got a orifice and not an expansion valve. So we're gonna do this one by superheat, not some cool. Alright, so then I opened my valves. You can see the valves are back seated up all the way. You can always put your caps back on. other cap and now these caps you're supposed to tighten them down with a wrench you cannot just be hand tightened you got to be tight like that okay next I'm gonna put my thermal probe on the suction line and right, just like that and then I'm gonna insulate that too just like I did over there okay now I have insulated my probe Connected my R22, flipped it upside down, opened the valve, approached the line, got liquid in it, and now I'm ready to start. There we go. So this thing here is pretty low. I know that. Because earlier it was froze up. So I'm gonna start adding some to it. And when you add liquid to a compressor, you gotta be careful not to put too much in at one time. because you can hurt the compressor like that. Oh yeah, it's low, it's pretty low, very low. Lost at least 50%, maybe more of its factory charge. All right, so I'm gonna watch this one while this one stabilizes. A little more, I wanna get it at least up above the green dial that says 40. That's where I wanna go up above before I start letting it stabilize. very hot in the house so the suction pressure will end up hanging out around 80 or 90 up here based on how hot it is in that house and yeah these, these units are dirty they need to get to get this dirt off of them Where that puts us. Alright, 
I'm gonna let that stabilize and I'm gonna clean them. Okay, well I can't record the whole cleaning process, but I did want to get this. There's a lot of dirt in there and it's really good that I'm getting it out. hard to get on camera but I'm gonna see if I can get it. Yeah there you go. You can actually see all the dirt that's in the coil as I do this. There's really a lot of dirt I'm washing out. Okay, so I have washed both of them, and it's still drying, but this one was running almost at 300, now it's at 325, still going up. My suction line is, temperature is coming down, you see? So that's good, that's good. Okay, wrapping everything up here, I'm sitting with a 12 degree superheat, just about. And I'm good with that. So these are complete. Alright, so I'm just uh, replacing the insulation. I did that one right there, so it looks a lot better. So I figure I'll do this one too. I got extra, extra material. Okay, and then this is how I'm gonna leave it. Got two new suction line insulation. Both suction lines insulated, and I got the drains uh, not sitting on the ground. And you see, like I said, we've got a steady stream of water. If you've got a steady stream of water coming out of your drains like that, then your AC is doing something right. Thanks for watching.